Hey everyone and welcome back to the Knowledge Portal video series and today we'll be speaking about a relatively new feature which uh, got introduced which is VPC endpoints. So let's go ahead and understand VPC endpoints with the simple use cases. Now uh, in this use case we have a EC2 and we have a S3 based scenario. So you have a EC2 instance running and you have a S3 running. Now if you want to send traffic from EC2 to S3, like if you want to upload a lot of log files or if you want to upload certain backups, the regular traffic must go with the internet. Now, this is a problem because if you have a lot of big file, like lot of big MySQL backups, then all of those backups file will have to go via the internet. Now, this is uh, quite fine, but uh, there were a lot of customers which were requesting like if you have a EC2 instance in let's assume Mumbai region and if you have S3 bucket in Mumbai region also, then ideally instead of going through the internet, there should be a connectivity uh, within the private link itself because both if both of the resources are within the same region, it is ideal to have a private link connectivity because it will bring a lot of benefits. The first benefit would be the security because no longer the traffic will have to go through the internet. Second is the performance. Remember, if you send traffic across the internet, the performance will always be less. And since AWS, if it will have a private connectivity, that will definitely be like a fiber optics. So the amount of time it will be required to send the data to the S3 bucket will be a huge uh, boost uh, when compared to sending the traffic across the internet. Now in order to uh, solve this issue, AWS actually decided to introduce the VPC endpoints. So if uh, the EC2 instance and if the S3 buckets are within the same region, now you can send the data across each other through the AWS internal private network. Now AWS internal private network is very, very fast and thus it allows us to bypass the internet. It also allows us to save cost because now you will be charged uh, related to the data charges of internal network and not the internet and it will also allow you to send a huge amount of data extremely fast between the EC2 instance and the S3 service. So this was one such use cases. Uh, AWS has introduced S3 service as the initial parameter when they had launched VPC endpoints, but now they are bringing a lot of services uh, in support of VPC endpoints because lot of users are actually using this specific functionality. So let's do one thing. Let's try this out uh, before we go ahead and understand more about the theoretical aspect. So I have two instances over here. One is uh, the KP Labs hyphen 2C. So by the name you'll see this is in the availability zone third and you have a uh, instance called as enhanced networking, which is in the availability zone 2B. So let's do one thing. Uh, let me just open up the VPC. And I'll select the appropriate VPC and I'll go to the subnets. So there are three subnets over here. So when you look into the subnets, which is associated with the second availability zone where our enhanced networking instance is launched within the route table, you only have one route, which is uh, the local route. You do not really have any route related to NAT gateway or internet gateway. So ideally this EC2 instance will have no connectivity to the internet. However, uh, when you talk about the EC2 instance in 2C, I'll click over here and the route table has a internet connectivity because there is a IGW attached. So from what uh, we can know, we can connect to this EC2 instance 2C, but we'll not be able to connect to the enhanced networking because it does not have a IGW or even a NAT gateway as a route entry. 
So I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and connect to the KP Labs hyphen 2C instance, which will be using as a proxy to connect to the enhanced networking instance. Now, both of them are within the same uh, VPC. So there will be a communication between uh, both these instance. Now, since I want to communicate to this enhanced networking instance, I'll be using this as a proxy to connect over here. So uh, let's do one thing. Let me connect to the public instance. So I am connected over here. Perfect. So I have a key called as mykey.pem, which I can use to connect uh, to the EC2 instance, uh, which just has the local route enabled. So 10.0.2.178, I'll connect. 10.0.2.178 perfect so i am connected to the ec2 instance now if i try to do a ping on google.com you see i'll not be able to reach anywhere this is because there is no internet connectivity of any sort uh, within this ec2 instance now same goes with s3 if i do aws s3 ls it will not return me any output because this instance is isolated within the private network. Now, let's go ahead and uh, create a VPC endpoint. This is actually uh, the, uh, the things which becomes much more interesting. I'll go to the endpoints over here and I'll click on create endpoint. Now, uh, if you see there are a lot of services uh, which are present. Now endpoints has two types. One is gateway and one is interface. We'll be uh, speaking uh, whenever the relevant section comes. However, uh, remember within the gateway, there are two uh, services which are supported. One is the DynamoDB and one is the S3. So we'll start with S3 uh, for the time being. Once you select S3 as the gateway, uh, select the right VPC, which is KP Labs hyphen U in my case. And now it will uh, show you that there are uh, multiple route tables which are associated. So let's do one thing. I'll open up VPC and we need to select uh, the route table which is associated with the enhanced networking instance. So let me go to the subnets and if I go to the route table, which is of 2B, the route table associated is 4B28. Perfect. So I'll select the 4B28 uh, as a route table. Uh, policy will uh, will just ignore it for the time being. So otherwise it will become much more confusing. And let's click on close. So you have one VPC endpoint uh, which got created. Now this VPC endpoint will also, let's wait for a while, will also have to be uh, added within the route table. So let's just quickly verify whether the endpoint status is available. It seems to be available. Now, if you go to the route table within the VPC endpoint, it says that it is associated, but it has not yet modified the route table entries. So if you want to see uh, the route table entry is not yet modified. We still have just one entry over here. Now uh, we have to add one more entry. So if I go to the endpoints, I click on route tables, manage route tables, uh, select the route table, click on modify route table. Perfect. So this would had uh, modified the route table for us. Perfect. So now you see there is one uh, route table entry which got associated. So this route table entry is basically uh, for com.amazon.aws.us-west-2.s3. So this is the new route table entry. So now uh, let's try this out. So even I have even if I have no internet connectivity, uh, let me just uh, because we were discussing that the resource should be within the same region, which is the EC2 instance and the S3 bucket. We'll 
pass on the AWS S3 LS command with a US West-2 region. And now you see I am actually able to see all the contents which are part of the S3 bucket. So if I do AWS S3 LS, S3 hyphen hyphen slash slash KP labs hyphen billing. Oops. So uh, one important thing to remember over here is that if you just uh, try this way, it will not work. You have to explicitly specify the region, which is US hyphen West hyphen two. Now I had not specified this uh, while running the, uh, in the AWS uh, credentials file. So you have to specify the region explicitly. And now you see, I'm able to uh, see all the contents, which is part of the S3 bucket. So now what you have is even though you do not have any internet connectivity. So if I do a google.com, I don't have any internet connectivity over here, but still uh, the S3 works perfectly. So I will be able to uh, push the data to S3. I'll be able to pull my data from S3 and so on. So this is a major, major boost uh, for those who needed a private link to the AWS S3 bucket. Again, uh, the upload and download will be much, much more faster because this time you'll be using the AWS private link instead of S3. Now, there are a few important things that I wanted to show you uh, before we conclude this lecture. Uh, looking into some of the important pointers related to the VPC endpoint. Uh, first important thing to remember is that earlier for EC2 instance to be able to access public resources like S3, the traffic needed to be passed via the internet gateway or NAT as a minimum. Now, simplifying the approach, AWS introduced a feature called as VPC endpoints, uh, which are basically a highly uh, secure and highly reliable connection, which provides a uh, direct connectivity uh, to the resources with the same region. Now, thus EC2 instance within the private VPC can now connect to the such services without any need of NAT gateway or even a uh, internet gateways. So AWS is soon launching the connectivity with various other resources earlier only S3 was supported. So now you have DynamoDB and more and more uh, resources uh, will be uh, supported for VPC endpoints. So this is a very great uh, feature which got introduced and many of the organizations they are now moving to VPC endpoints because it is much more faster to restore and backup data uh, for their EC2 instances. So this is it about this lecture. I hope you understood the concepts of VPC endpoints. And if you have any doubts, feel free to connect us at Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And most important, mail us at instructors at the rate kplabs.in. Thanks for watching.